welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, happy Halloween. Today is Halloween. I hope that you guys all have a happy and safe Halloween, but today we are going to be making a fluted coffee table. We're going to be upcycling my old coffee table, which if you guys watched my living room makeover, and I will link it here in the description in case you didn't get a chance to uh, watch that. It was a huge huge transformation but one of my favorite parts was I made this coffee table um, and I just upcycled my old IKEA coffee table that I actually found in the trash so <laughs> that's fun it just it was such an easy way to upgrade something that I already had um, and so I wanted to share it very detailed with you guys so that's what we're gonna be doing today and um, let's just hop into it <laughs> So we're starting out with this old coffee table that I actually found in the trash, like by the dumpster of our old apartments when somebody was leaving it when they were moving. And I believe it's from Ikea, fairly inexpensive. I had taken it then and given it a coat of spray paint, but now we're gonna give it a fully new life. Now, initially I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with it, so you're gonna see me here clean it off and then give it a coat of black spray paint, but that was kind of unnecessary. I mean, like obviously I would clean it, but you definitely, if you're gonna be covering it up, you don't need to spray paint it. Um, I. You could totally make a base too. You could thrift uh, or get another coffee table from Ikea. This can really work with anything that you have as long as you have a solid base. Um, I got that piece of wood like tabletop from Lowe's. It was about $30. Now listen, although this is really inexpensive, I was not super thrilled with how it stained. Um, and that was just like a personal preference. You can see that kind of like red stripe down the center and you can see in some places it looks a little yellow. And I think that's because of the wood glue that holds those pieces together. If I could go back, I would definitely make the top out of some different wood um, and make it myself to make sure there was no wood glue and you know, all of that. But you know, it, it got the job done. I tried to stain over it with a more neutral stain so I could get that red and yellow out. And although it worked, I did not like the way that it looked. So I ended up flipping it over and just going over it again with some more stain, uh, but not putting on that kind of gray stain. And it turned out good. Um, there is still a little bit of red in it, but you know, we're just living with that and that's okay. So I did let that dry for about 24 hours before I moved on with the top at all. Okay, do not let my circular saw scare you. You can do this with a hand saw um, and I'm gonna explain exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just doing it with my circular saw, um, my chop saw because I have it and it's faster. Um, but you do not need this. You can literally get a miter box and a handsaw and you will be just fine. But basically I measured out from the top of my table to the bottom of my table and I cut my trim pieces to size. I'm gonna insert a picture of the uh, exact trim pieces that I got from Home Depot. They are super affordable. I think for one like, it was either eight or 10 piece. It was like $4 um, and it does require a lot, but any kind of like fluted furniture similar to what I'm making here costs like thousands and thousands of dollars. So this is a super affordable way to do it. I did cut a few different pieces at a time to just make it go a little quicker. Now there was two different options I could lay this trim on. I could do it with the points up and that would use less trim or I could go for that more fluted look and put them together to create those little divots and that's what I ended up doing. This way did require a little bit more trim, but it was definitely the look that I was going for. So at first I started to put the pieces on while it was standing up and they were kind of sliding around. So that's when I went back and decided to flip it on its side. Um, I'm using Gorilla adhesive in my caulk gun just to, um, you know, adhere them together. And I am using these little clamps from Dollar Tree, super inexpensive, um, just to hold them in place until the Gorilla adhesive had set. Now, it sets within probably about like 20 to 30 minutes, maybe even quicker than that, depending on how thick you put it on. But it doesn't fully cure until like 24 hours. So, I did, um, at first I was doing these in sections of like 
you know, 10 and just using the clips that I had and then I would let it dry for like 20 minutes and go on from there. I found though at the end, you can go a little bit uh, more quickly. You just have to be really careful to make sure that nothing kind of gets off base. Um, you also want to make sure it doesn't really matter if they're lined up at the top. If there's like a little bit of gapping at the top, you're not going to be able to see it because of the tabletop. But if there's any size difference at the bottom, you will be able to notice that. So I lined all of my trim pieces up at the bottom and that really helped me keep it fully straight all the way across. Now, I should mention that I didn't film this part, but I did um, put all of the trim pieces across before I glued any at all, just to see exactly how many I would need and um, to get the pattern correctly because, you know, they're going at this fluted pattern. Now, lucky for me, it fit perfectly, um, but make sure that you do that so that you know if there's gonna be any gapping. Um, there was a little bit of gapping on my on the back side, which I'll show you a little bit later, and I just, did a really easy trick to like fill it in and so you totally can't notice but um, definitely like lay some out in between just to make sure that everything is still straight and still good to go now I definitely underestimated the amount of trim that this would take so I did have to go back to Home Depot to get some more um, it's also gonna vary how much trim it takes depending on the size of your base or the table that you make or that you already have and you just want to upgrade so keep that in mind um, you might have to run to the hardware store a few times but again once that front portion dried fully i went ahead and flipped it onto the side so that i could do um, my smaller side to the coffee table and i'm just repeating the process uh, i was able to go a little bit more quickly on this part um, and I am, you'll see that I'm like pinching them together again with those clips at the bottom and at the top because they will kind of slide around and expand. So you just wanna make sure that you have everything compressed correctly and straight um, and just kind of keep checking on that as you continue to work down and through um, the entire like side because like I said, it does take about 20 to 30 minutes for them to fully like cure where it's hard to move and then 24 hours to like actually cure. So you do have a little bit of time in case you happen to mess anything up in between. Okay, so this is very important. I did the smaller side again next instead of flipping to the other longer side. And the reason that I did that is because my trim pieces I noticed on um, the other side it started with this fluted piece out, so like that more rounded piece out, but it ended uh, the trim piece in the opposite direction. So it wasn't gonna give me that more rounded look on the edges as I had on the front, if that makes sense. So I knew that I had to do the other side so that I didn't mess up the back and I got the pattern correct. Um, it might be different depending on the size of your table. So again, definitely lay everything out before you glue anything so you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. Um, and then I did the back side. I'm not gonna show you this whole process because you guys, you, you saw me put these on many, many times. You get it, the glue, put it on with the clips. Now you can see that there are some little gapping and some a little bit of glue coming through. I wiped any of the glue off, but for my bigger gaps, I went ahead and filled it in with just some caulking and then went back with you know, my finger in a wet paper towel to remove any of it. And that kind of makes it look more seamless. Now you could do this to every single gap uh, if you want, but I just did it to the ones that were very noticeable to me. After I had let my tabletop dry for like 24 hours, I went ahead and put some polyurethane on the top. I did end up doing two coats of this, but I think I only ended up filming one. Um, I did attempt to spray the top with like a polycrylic spray, but I felt like it did not put a really good seal of protection on it. And honestly, I might go back and do this a third time because after using it a little bit, I feel like 
the tabletop needs to be a little bit more durable. But basically, I just brought my base in and put my tabletop on. You could put some wood under that to secure it, but I wanna be able to use the inside for storage still. And this is how it turned out. today's video you guys I love how this coffee table turned out I think it is so cute and I love that I upcycled something that I already had um, I think that you know it's really important to try to do that to save not only money but just to save stuff from the landfill so if you guys do something similar and you re recreate this project I would love to see it make sure to you know send me a picture um, through like DMs on Instagram or tag me on Instagram TikTok, wherever I would love 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 to see see your recreations or takes on this project um, and if you guys like this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up it really really helps the YouTube algorithm and comment down below if you guys would like to see me do more videos like this um, like going to Ikea and maybe upcycling some of their more affordable pieces into something that looks super high and I would love to do videos like that so let me know if that's something that you guys want to see but if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring that bell notification so that you never miss when I upload next. And if you happen to have them, make sure to follow me on all my other social medias. They'll be linked here on the screen and in the description box below. But that's it for me today, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!